Today, we have the pleasure of welcoming a third generation restaurateur um, who currently owns and manages Three Juniors Restaurants. Um, he also oversees the mail ordering and the online business um, for Juniors. And I heard, um, I found out today that Juniors will be distributing in the UK, which is a good thing for them. Um, also, he has recently made appearances on um, Good Morning America, The Today Show, and um, Emerald Live. And today we are very lucky to have him here at Googleplex NYC, and I would like to welcome Alan Rosen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, it's nice to be here. I was pretty amazed walking through your building just now how food-centric a company Google is. It seems like everywhere you turn there's another kitchen and another place to grab a snack. And the fact that all of you came out during your lunch hour to hear me talk is uh, quite flattering. Sarah, thank you for making me feel welcome here today. I appreciate it. Um, my family's been in the restaurant business since the 1900s. My grandfather, when he was a young boy, used to work at a soda shop on the Lower East Side. And, you know, back then it was a candy store and it had a soda shop in the back. And they'd sell you an egg cream and a pretzel, you know, for, under, you know, for a couple of pennies. And uh, his mother, in her infinite wisdom, said, why don't you sit, try and save a nickel a week? And by the time he, uh, 1920s rolled around, he was in his 20s, he owned three luncheonettes in, in Manhattan. He went to go open up, uh, it was, I think it was three or four. He went to go open up in downtown Brooklyn to open up another, and it was called the Enduro, and he went to go open up another one. And my grandmother went with him at the time, and she said, if you open up here, we'll starve. You know, what, what, what do we, you know, it was like a morgue down there, she said. And he said, honey, if I listen to you, I'll be wearing cigar boxes for shoes. And he decided to open up a restaurant. There was his fifth restaurant, actually, at that time. Um, stock market crashed, as we all know. He had to sell four out of the five places. He sold the four in Manhattan, kept the one in Brooklyn, believe it or not. Operated that one until 1948. Uh, went broke again, believe it or not. You won't read that in the book because my family, I think, blocked it out. Um, he went broke again and decided that he was going to reopen that restaurant. He went to a contractor who we still know the family, and he said, I don't have any money, but I promise I'll pay you if you help me build this restaurant called Junior's. It's going to be a family place. My sons are going to work with me, and we're going to make a go of it. It's going to be a moderately priced restaurant. And they, the guy agreed to do it, which is pretty amazing in, t in light of what's going on today in our world. Um, my dad, my uncle, and my grandfather continued to work there, and they said, if we're going to be a great restaurant in New York, we have to have great cheesecake. And they literally would go to different stores and buy cheesecake, come back to the restaurant, go up to the second floor, and start baking. And they liked the consistency of this one. They liked the, you know, the crust of this one. They didn't like this one. And that's how they hit upon this magic formula. We started selling it in the early 50s. And uh, no one really knew about us except our customers, to be quite honest. And they ran that restaurant in 1973. The Village Voice wrote an article um, saying we were the best. And then about two months later or three months later, I'm not sure the exact date, New York Magazine came out with this full poster size, you know, the Cheesecake Olympics. And Junior's was at the top of the... Uh, top of the heap, and uh, that really put us on the map. And we became known as a restaurant that not only was a great restaurant, you know, moderately priced restaurant, but we became known as having the best cheesecake in New York. That's the basic building blocks of, you know, where, where we started, where we come from. I came to the business about 16 years ago. Um, we still had our one restaurant in Brooklyn. We started to do a little mail order business, you know, we'd send, you know, people would call us from Florida and say, I moved from Brooklyn, can you send me a cheesecake? And I would go downstairs and I'd take out my tape gun and We'd start boxing cheesecakes like that. We didn't know what we were doing. We had no clue. We would do it on, you know, eight-foot wooden tables in our basement. And uh, it started to become a business. We just we started to send it. We made a catalog. I think the first catalog was probably, you know, two of these sheets put together. But and now we have, a, you know, 12 or 14 or 16-page catalog of cheesecakes. We send out, you know, a couple hundred thousand of them a year. We sell cheesecakes on QVC, as some of you may or may not know. You don't look like the QVC crowd, but, um, but, but no, a lot of people shop there and just don't tell anybody. Um, and so now we, you know, we sell a lot of cheesecakes, and we decided we were going to write this book. And my dad said to me, you're, excuse my language, you're effing crazy. He said, well, you're going to give out the recipe? And I said, yeah, we'll give out the recipe. He said, but people won't have to buy cheesecakes you know, from us anymore. And I said, you know what, Dad? they'll still buy cheesecakes from us. And I think they will. Uh, the, you know, the book only came out last week, so so, so far we're hanging tough. Um, <laughs> but, it's, it's, you know, cheesecake, like, like my business, is if you want to make cheesecake at home, and obviously all, you're gonna, all of you are going to take home this book and I guess make an attempt at it, it takes a little patience and a lot of passion, 
But once you do it once or twice, you'll own it forever. It'll be yours. It'll be something that you can go to some family or friend's house and say, I'll make dessert, don't worry about it. And you will literally be able to make from this book an awesome cheesecake, guaranteed. I mean, the results so far have been, have been great. Everything's been triple tested. Just like I feel about my restaurants, we're not gonna sell anybody anything that I wouldn't, you know, wouldn't be satisfied with myself. And as you can tell, um, I'm pretty difficult to please. I don't know if you can tell, but I am. Um, so when you, get, when you get home tonight, you literally need six, if you just wanna make a plain cheesecake and you don't wanna go through, we make, we make a sponge cake on the bottom of our cheesecakes. That's, you gotta bake the sponge cake, let it rest, and then put the cheesecake mixture on top and then bake it again. And you're gonna put it in about a half size sheet pan with some water on the bottom. So if you have a uh, spring form pan, you're gonna need to cover the bottom with aluminum foil. Otherwise, you'll have water leaking into your cheesecake, which will not be good. Um, if the water evaporates, add a little more. Don't open and close the oven 300 times while you're baking it because it's like a souffle cheesecake. It'll literally rise up and then it'll get golden brown on the edges, which is how we like it. Um, follow the, pic you know, the pictures on the book. That's the color you're looking for. Some people, if you go to the Midwest, you know, all the cheesecakes are white, like this. That's, that's not what we do, and it's not what New York cheesecake's all about. It's, it's very simple. Cream cheese, fresh eggs, heavy cream sugar, touch of vanilla. I think we might put a little cornstarch in there. Am I right? I'm right. Um, I thought someone was checking. And so you'll be able to do it. And once you do it, once you bake the cake, don't move it around your kitchen all day. Let it settle. You can let it settle at room temperature for three, four, five hours. Don't worry about it. Then cool it overnight. Let it set in your refrigerator. Then take it out of the pan. Because if you try and take it out of the pan right away, it's going to crack. And that's most people have problems with cracking. That's one of the things that goes wrong. You're also, when you blend the ingredients, you're not going to blend it with a whip. You're going to blend it with a paddle. There's a reason for that as well. It's a, it's a heavy, dense New York-style cheesecake, so you don't want to incorporate a lot of air into it. So you're not just going to throw the mixer on high and go make a phone call and come back 15 minutes later, you're gonna have like this aerated cheesecake that's not gonna be New York style. It'll probably taste wonderful. It just won't have the consistency of a New York style cheesecake. If anyone has any questions while I'm talking, by the way, just throw them out there, because I prepared absolutely nothing, but I could talk for hours about my business. Yes, sir? Plain. I sort of have to say that. Um, it's a toss up, but you, if you're a purist, a lot of people believe the only cheesecake you should eat is plain. And they'll look at some of the recipes in this book and they'll say, and that's blasphemy. How could you? How could you do that? And but you know what? Eventually, you know, one morning I'm sitting with my dad over coffee, and he says, "Why don't we take a plain cheesecake and put it inside of a chocolate layer cake? That's a devil's food cheesecake. It's one of our most popular items. So you know, what could be bad about a chocolate cake filled with cheesecake? So you have that in here. And later on in the cafeteria, you'll have a chocolate mousse cheesecake, plain cheesecake, chocolate mousse covered with chocolate ganache. It's uh, pretty tasty too. So yes, plain's my favorite, but chocolate doesn't bother me either. Anyone else? If you have questions, please step up to the microphone. We're recording this. And I'm a major junior student from Brooklyn. Thank so you. We like it. Represent with that. You guys make this really awesome cheese pie where you, there's no um, there's no sponge cake on the bottom. It's just in a, the crust. The pie crust. It's right. So good. What I don't know if you can tell me, but I'm going to ask. What is? How do you make the little crunchies on the outside? Those, the, that's a macaroon crunch. It's a nut. We actually have someone make it for us. Believe it or not, we used to make it ourselves, uh -huh. but. As you get a little bigger, we went to someone and said, Can you, it's a macaroon nut. It's, it's toasted and chopped, and quite frankly, I don't know how they do it, but if you come to the restaurant and you need some, I'll get it for you. There's some, there's some substitution. We, we actually give you, uh -huh. um, I don't know if the recipe's in here or we tell you how to get to it, but it's not going to be exactly like hmm. what we do because, okay. quite frankly, we don't know how to make it anymore. It's gotten so good. It's, awesome. actually got, it's actually gotten better over the years as we gave that away to someone else. They actually were fine at me. We it fight over it at my house. So we're like, no, it's my crunchies. <laughs> yeah, but but it's nuts, and anyone who's allergic to nuts, I got a letter from someone today who didn't know it was nuts. So, thank you. She's talking about the macaroon crunch on all of our fruit pies, strawberry pies around the edges. You'll notice about a half inch layer of nuts just to decorate the edges. Makes the cake look more finished. Oh, that's it. Well, I can keep talking about cheesecake then. Um, there, there's, there's a lot of great pictures in here. I, I'm glad you all got the book. Um, some of you are probably never going to get to some of the crazy stuff, like the candy bar explosion and the, you know, stuff like this. But it's not that difficult, because the basis for everything in this book is that plain cheesecake recipe. So to make a chocolate cheesecake, all you'll have to do is, am I talking like up and down? Is that the problem? All right. All you'll have to do 
is put some chocolate into your cheesecake mixture and then finish the top. I don't know how many of you are bakers are going to actually bake a cheesecake in the next. Great. That's cool. It's Thanksgiving, pumpkin cheesecake. Pumpkin puree, cinnamon, some spices in the New York style cheesecake. Sure fire hit for the holidays. Um, let's see, what else can I tell you about us? Any more questions? Yes, sir. Can I ask you a non-cheesecake question? You can ask me any question you want. Um, I have an interest in the egg cream. Um, egg cream. Can you give the, you know, yeah. your ideal recipe for the egg ideal cream? Ideal recipe for the egg cream. If you have a glass that's about this big, about that much chocolate syrup, about that much milk, and that much cold seltzer. Stir it's it. the order of operations. Well, exactly. I want real specific here. Order of operations. Chocolate, milk, seltzer. Stir. At the end, you can bounce the seltzer off the spoon, which will give you that white foamy top. Or you can come to the restaurant and we'll show you how. All right. And I have another question. Um, yeah. It seems like juniors would have been part of like a real thriving like Lower East Side food culture that isn't quite the same anymore. And how do you think that you survived and a whole bunch of other ones didn't? Um, I know you're I, in a different honestly, location. I'll, I'll give all the credit to my dad. Okay. Um, my dad's still 74 years old, comes into the restaurant every day, goes through the walk-in boxes, you know, BSs with the chefs. And that's what we all still do. I mean, I still go to every restaurant every day. So if I don't notice the things my dad taught me to notice, then we're going to be in trouble. Um, but we happen to notice that I have a lot of great people working with me. Um, we're opening up our fourth restaurant in May at uh, Foxwoods Casino. They're opening up a new hotel next door. So we're going to open up there, and we really keep our eye on the food and the service. And, our, and we're a moderately priced restaurant. We believe that for 10 or $12, we over-deliver, and that's why we're still around. My dad really kept his eye on the ball. I have sort of two things I'd like to hear you address. One is, how did cheesecake become your thing? Okay. So obviously, Junior's was a diner, but right. probably didn't set out to sell cheesecake uh, no, it wasn't as a part. specialty. And the second thing is, um, I know there's a co-author on the book, someone who's just described as a recipe specialist, and I wanted you to, to hear a little bit about that relationship and what Absolutely. that Absolutely. Um, the answer to the first part of the question is, it was part of my grandfather's mission to have great cheesecake. For some reason, New York-style cheesecake was associated with every good restaurant in downtown Brooklyn. There was a Brass Rail and a Lindy's and all these places. I mean, you guys see the Lindy's today. It doesn't have good cheesecake, but way back when, in the 50s, it did. And my grandfather would go to places like that and said, we have to do better than they're doing. And he literally was, I mean, my uncle, even, you know, until he retired about eight years ago, used to bring me back stuff all the time. Everywhere he went, he'd be like, look what I found. He'd bring it back to me. and It would be like two days of work to figure out whether we could actually do it or not. But that, that was their modus operandi, to see something and do it better. And he said, cheesecake's going to be part of what we do. And we did it, and we became famous for it. Um, it's amazing it worked out that way. I don't think he would have ever imagined that this would be our second book and we'd have four restaurants, which is no big deal. Don't get me wrong. There's guys with 104 restaurants or 204 restaurants. And the fact that we're giving out the recipe is probably rolling over in his grave right now. But uh, I guess he'll have to get over it. Um, the second question was the relationship with Beth. When we did our first book, I did most of the work, but I needed someone to put it into a book. I'm not a writer by trade, and I'm pretty busy running restaurants. So I met this lady named Beth Allen. And she literally would come to our restaurant every single day and go to the chef and say, how do you make this? And the chef would say, I use this much of this and this much of that. And she somehow put together a cookbook where every recipe worked. We got nothing but compliments. And she was wonderful at it. And she almost became part of the family in a way. She was sitting, and you know, we have this table where we sit in Brooklyn every morning. And every morning I'd walk in, she started to get there before me, you know, which was early in the morning because I used to get there at 6.30 and 7 in the morning. Now I'm a little later. But because I have two young kids and I like to see them in the morning at seven, so that's what I do. But uh, so Beth, when we came time to do the next book, we were building our restaurant in Times Square, and every day Beth would bring me another cake or another chapter or another three pages and say, "Look what you know I made today, and look how it came out." And I'd taste it, and then she'd go back to the drawing board and keep working on it. And that that was the process. And you know, so it wasn't as difficult to write this book because she's so good at what she does. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, thanks for coming today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. made everyone's day here. Um, you didn't eat yet. Where to eat? <laughs> Perhaps this is a little bit of a cheesecake blasphemy, but is there a low-fat recipe besides eating a little? There is more? not a low-fat recipe in the book, but if you wanted to substitute low-fat cream cheese, you can. But I'm certainly not going to direct someone on how to make it because my philosophy is if you're going to have a cheesecake, have a small slice instead and just have the real stuff and you'll be satisfied. And, you know, everything in moderation, I guess. 
Thank you. Thank you. If I said anything else, I would be shocked. <laughs> <laughs> we did have one years ago, but I, I, I did it because QVC forced me to do it, and I discontinued it shortly after because it wasn't what I wanted to be known for, <laughs> though it sold very well. It was certified by the American Heart Association and all that stuff, but I just couldn't keep doing it. As, as you can tell by this guy rolling his eyes in the middle. But uh, any other questions? No? I mean, I don't know what else to tell you about juniors. You know, we're, we're, it's, it's amazing. Cheesecake, by the way, if anyone doesn't, is the most popular dessert in America right now, more so than apple pie, believe it or not. So once you have this book, you will be um, able to make the best cheesecake and the most popular cheesecake in the world, I guess. Yes, sir. Sure. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Appreciate you coming out today. Uh, question. Right now on Amazon, the two reviews for your book are only one star out of five. Correct. And the complaint is that these aren't the authentic recipes. Yeah, well, the, the first lady, I believe, read the book. I don't think she's that intelligent. Yeah. And anything that didn't say, no, I read these, I read these yesterday and I was pissed. Trust me. <laughs> I mean, go on QVC. We get 4.8 stars out of five. We sold QVC 61,000 of these books. We get 4.8 out of 5. So one lady thought because the word juniors wasn't in front of the name of the item, that it wasn't our recipe, mm -hmm. which to me, I don't know how she got that, but that's what she got. The second lady who claims that the lemon coconut cheesecake is made with buttercream and not whipped cream is 100% correct. We made a mistake. And I went nuts yesterday because the lemon coconut layer cake cheesecake is made with buttercream, not whipped cream. And Beth made a mistake. And trust me, Beth wasn't happy to hear from me yesterday because I missed it. And I read this a bunch of times, and I just missed it um, in the middle of opening a restaurant. So that the second review is legit. Mm -hmm. The first review, I think the lady just took the, the fact that the word juniors wasn't present in front of the item. And there'll be a response up there shortly from me. I was writing it last night. No, because I mean, when I get a customer complaint in my restaurant business, I answer every complaint, every one. And because there's not that many, I'm, I can afford to do that. So do we? That what? Yeah. Should we sub out um, buttercream in that recipe then? Is that right? Yeah, you should. Absolutely. And on the next printing, it'll be buttercream. <coughs> Guy did his homework. Yeah, I saw that yesterday. I wasn't pleased. Because our last book got great reviews. And on QVC, we got great reviews. And we saw, I mean, Amazon, I guess, has sold a few books. But QVC sold 61,000 of them in two weeks. And we all laughed when I said QVC at the beginning. Anything else? No? You guys just want to go eat? I'll be more than happy to sign everyone's book upstairs. Oh, yes, sir. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll do one more question on cheesecake technique. Um, lots of recipes have you, at when cooking a cheesecake, turn the oven off and leave it in the oven for a long time to cool very, very slowly. And I noticed you don't do that. And I wonder if you could no, we, what, we, what we'd rather you do, you can turn off the oven, take it out of the oven, just let it cool at room. The way we've always done it, we've always cooled at room temperature. Um, let it settle down. It's going to come out of your pan. It's literally going to rise. And just leave it on your counter. You know, put it on top of your stove, whatever, where you can put some metal and just leave it there until it settles down. And then put it in your refrigerator. Then depan it the next day. I think you'll just have better luck with that. Um, you know, maybe they're probably saying leave it in your oven, which you could probably do if you want to leave the oven door open and you don't have little kids, just because that way you're not moving it at all. So the less you move it, the better off you're going to be. Please, okay. Plain. Uh, yeah, the question was, what, what would I recommend as the first recipe? I would say the plain one. And if you want to leave out the big, you know, the sponge cake crust and you want to go buy a, you, like, you said you like the pie shell, go buy a pie crust in the store and just make the filling and then you can make a pie. You know, you can make a cake with a different uh, crust. It'll take, uh, you know, an hour and 10 minutes. Thank you. Anyone else? Chateau, you can. No, just, I, I have a bottle. If you have a bottle, then use it. So, so turn over a champagne? Um, you can do both. I mean, I think it's a personal preference. I've done both. I, I mean, I drink anything pretty much on a Saturday night. <laughs> Rest of the week, I'm sober. But um, yeah, no, I, if you have, I was sort of kidding when I said that. But the fact that you have one, you might as well use it. Um, yeah, I think it would be delicious. I don't have a bottle of Chateau, you can. So I'll come over. I'll bake the cheesecake for you. I'll bring the cheesecake. Be my pleasure. Any other questions? 
And cheesecake, you can serve it with any meal. That's what's great about it. If you, I mean, it doesn't matter what you had for dinner. Cheesecake is on, I think, 90% of the restaurant menus in the world. So now it's going to be on your menu in your home, which is kind of nice. Thanks for having me today, folks. I really appreciate it. Thank you.